I was 37, I don't think the, the people I consulted or certainly myself or my husband thought I'd had a stroke. I'd lost the power in my leg, I had a bad headache for a couple of days, but I put it all down to being pregnant because all the information I sourced on the internet was that headaches were a symptom of early pregnancy, so I thought that was all that was wrong with me. Um, after approximately three days, the power in my leg went and I realised it was something a lot more serious. I went to see my GP because I didn't realise just how serious it was. From there, I was sent straight to a, a medical assessment unit in a regional hospital. And a number of hours later, when I became critically ill, I was admitted to intensive care and from there was taken by ambulance to Beaumont Hospital who I would say if it wasn't for the assistance I received in Beaumont, I certainly wouldn't be here to tell the tale, nor would my daughter, who was four in March. We've been extremely lucky, and I was extremely lucky with the care I received in the hospitals and the rehabilitation care I received. Subsequently, with physiotherapy, not having any power in my leg initially it was quite scary. Um, I went through a number of weeks of physiotherapy in Beaumont Hospital and then when I came home that continued. I couldn't make it as far as my front gate. I couldn't collect the post for over two weeks and it was like a challenge every day. I was getting a couple of steps further but wasn't actually making it to the front gate. But I did. Um, my speech was also something that was a problem and that was a problem for me in work because the type of work I do, I'm an advocate. That's all I do. So if I, my speech didn't come back, I had a, my career would have come to an end. The career path I was following. Um, again, it was the care I received from speech therapists. You'll have to forgive me, I have a cold, so my voice is a, a little bit strained. The care I received from the speech therapists in helping me to speak again. Initially, I was saying things completely out of context. I would use the wrong word. I knew what I was trying to say, but that wasn't what was coming across. I hope I'm getting it right today. I think at this stage I am certainly getting it right. Um, I, that happened for a number of months. I was out of work initially for um, July, August and September. I went back to work for two days a week with medical permission to go back for two days a week uh, that October whilst I was still pregnant and then finished up work the following February obviously to, to take maternity leave and I've worked since I returned when my, my daughter was seven months old. Um, I work a three day week now, I've never gone back to full time work but that's more by choice than any other reason. But it was the, the care I received and certainly the, the quick attention I received and the diagnosis that would have assisted me to get to the stage where I am and I will always be grateful for that because without it, I know I wouldn't be in the position I'm in today. My daughter, um, obviously it was a very long pregnancy because the stroke happened when I was five weeks pregnant, which made things very difficult. I spent some time in hospital initially and then I was seen every week for the remainder of the pregnancy to eight months and then every day. And I was detained in hospital on a number of occasions because they weren't happy to let me home. Certain things just weren't right. But we didn't know if the stroke had had any effect, but great, thankfully it didn't. My daughter was born and there was no difficulties with her and she is a perfect four-year-old, bold and cheeky, like any four-year-old should be. Uh, and we've been very, very lucky. I haven't tempted fate. I decided not to tempt fate and I haven't tried to have another baby since. We, we said we were very lucky with how things went for us, so it wasn't an issue. Um, I'm grateful to be here and I'm grateful that I have my daughter. But I would certainly say the, the perception was when I went to receive treatment, it couldn't be a stroke because I was 37. It didn't seem to be something that people were aware of. They thought I was ill. I'd, initially it was thought it was a very bad migraine. But stroke didn't seem to be a question at the very start. And I think it's important that people are made aware that it does happen and it's not just to people in the older age category, which is what people traditionally think, but it happens to young people too. And they need an awful lot of help and support 
and aftercare to get through it. Because if not, if they don't make that rehabilitation, if they don't get well, they do need ongoing care. I'm in a position I don't need that, for which, as I said before, I'm very grateful. But if it wasn't for the assistance I got at the outset, I may not be in that position. And I think people need to be aware that it can happen to somebody quite young and that it can have effects that are going to be very long lasting if you live to the age that you're expected, your life expectancy. I would have had over 40 years that potentially I would not have been as well for. So I think it's very important that people are aware it happens to young people and to make sure that they get the care and the assistance they require at the outset. Thank you. I'm going to talk in general here now today, but really we have to remember that no two strokes are the same. Everybody's different. It depends on the area of brain that's involved, the amount of brain tissue that's involved, and as well, you know, other comorbidities, other medical conditions that people have. So really, I'm generalizing here. So, you know, if you do have something more specific you want to talk to me about afterwards, then that's fine. Um, so, what's good about exercise? Why do we want to be exercising? Really, exercise is very, very important in the prevention of illness. It's important in the prevention and in the management of osteoporosis. Um, particularly weight-bearing exercise, it's very important to keep your muscles, your joints and your bones as strong as you possibly can. Exercise is important, um, as Dr. Donnelly has already said, in your secondary prevention of having a further stroke or in the prevention of heart disease. Um, when you exercise, your heart, your lungs and your blood vessels work more efficiently. They can deliver oxygen better to the cells so they can work in a better way. Also, your blood, your blood vessels are less likely to become narrowed or to become clogged. Um, so that again <coughs> will help reduce your, your risk factors for having another cardiac event or, or, or a stroke, a further stroke. Uh, exercise is also very important in reducing your cholesterol, your blood pressure and in helping control your blood sugars. So that again will help to reduce your risk of having stroke. Exercise is important in the prevention of obesity. It can help you maintain a healthy weight or you know, help with weight loss. It helps your digestive system work better um, and you can get more benefit from your food. Um, you can use up your energy stores rather than actually storing them. And we actually do run a risk modification program in Balmaslow where we will actually um, take people on for a, like similar to a cardiac rehab program really so it's again it's using exercise to prevent their the risk of having a further stroke um, as I said depression is fairly common um, after having a stroke and exercise can help with your psychological well-being it can help with the release of endorphins it can help to release stress um, it helps with socialization it helps you meet people and it helps you sleep better so they in themselves are positive as well so how do you get started? What do you want to do? Really, before embarking on any exercise program, you know, you have to think about where you're going with it. It's important that you try and involve your weaker, your affected side as much as possible. You want to integrate that. You try and be as independent as you can. Try and do as much as you can for yourself. Um, exercise is good, but it is very, very important that we recognise that tiredness is equally, you know, something to be recognised and rest is equally good. Tired muscles are more prone to injury. Um, also, when you're tired, the quality of movement isn't as good, so you can, it, the quality isn't as good, so it can be quite frustrating in that you feel you're not, you're not achieving what you want to achieve. So it is very, very important, particularly in the beginning, that you recognise tiredness in your own body and that you actually rest. Initially, we would always encourage people, when starting an exercise <coughs> program, to do a little and do it often, and then progress as you feel fit. So what types of exercise? Again, as I said, I'm talking about exercise in general. Um, so you want to include some of each of the following groups of exercise. Stretching exercises are very, very important. It's important to maintain as much movement as possible in the joints and to maintain or to improve your flexibility. Strengthening exercises are good, so they're what we would use you know, to, to, to get your muscles stronger. Generally following a stroke, we, 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 we watch what we call your muscle tone. It's the tightness in a muscle. So generally when we're working on strengthening exercises, we work on using your body weight as your form of resistance. We don't really encourage people to use weights if they have a problem with muscle tone. Um, so just to bear that in mind. Aerobic exercise is very, very good if somebody is 
is at that level of mobility and they're able to participate in aerobic exercise. And when we mean aerobic exercise, we talk about the exercise that gets the heart and the lungs working, that gets, gets your circulation going. And by this we mean swimming, walking, cycling, aerobics, um, whatever really. Balance exercises are very, very good to, um, to become a part of your exercise program. Balance is never going to improve if you stay in a seated position, if you stay sitting or in a, in a supported position. So it's important that somebody's balance exercises are pitched at their own level. For somebody, <coughs> just simply standing up and sitting down is enough to challenge their balance. But if somebody is more mobile, then you know, standing exercises, something like yoga, tai chi, um, that kind of stuff will really challenge somebody's balance and will help to actually improve it. Uh, balance will only get better if you challenge it. Uh, breathing exercises, very simple, and they probably should form the core and the basis, the basis really for anybody's exercise program. When you breathe more effectively, then your, your, your lungs work more efficiently, they can get more oxygen to your body. It's very important when exercising that you always exercise in a safe environment. So if you're not really good on your feet, it's very important that you, you, know, you make sure you have sufficient supervision or support in the house that if you were to fall over, then there is somebody there to, to give you help. And when undertaking any kind of exercise, it is important that you try and maintain as good a posture as you can, so you're working your muscles in the best possible way, best possible position. So before embarking on an exercise program, really it's important to check with your physician. Um, as we said, you know, a lot of people can have comorbidities, they can have other medical conditions and other medical things going on. Some people may need to have a stress test before starting on an exercise program, um, that would be very important. Uh, visit your chartered physio to set a tailored exercise program. By that, I mean, you know, if you visit a physio, they can actually specifically uh, give you the best exercises for you based on your ability and your disability. Um, they can also instruct you on how best to move so you're not actually moving in. in you, they can check your movement pattern so you minimize pain and stiffness and stress on your joints and on your muscles. As I said already, when you start an exercise program, uh, start slowly and gradually in increase your intensity as you feel fit and your exercise program as well as including breathing exercises and postural control should really include, include stretching, a warm up and a cool down as well and this can help to prevent injury. Um, it's a good idea to try and vary your, your routine, try not to do the same thing two days in a row so you're working different muscles so you're not fatiguing the same muscles or getting you know, muscle cramp and aching. Um, if, you know, if you are at a level where you can use equipment, like you know, go to the gym, use the bicycle, the rowing machine, the treadmill, then make sure you know how to use it before you get up on it. Uh, read all instructions or get somebody to show you what to do and show you how to use it. And always wear safety equipment. So if you are on a bike, make sure you have your high boots <laughs> jacket, make sure you have your helmet on. Um, Well-fitting shoes are an absolute must. So you know, make sure you've got good supportive footwear on. And as I said earlier, always in a safe environment. When exercising, it's important you know, that you know when to stop as well. Um, so if you experience any pain, any swelling, um, then stop. If you experience any stiffness, you know, then maybe stop at the level that you're at and maybe you know, try and work again at that level the next day and then gradually try and increase it. Uh, the recommendations for exercise are that you, know, you work at a moderate, moderate physical activity and they recommend 20 to 30 minutes of activity for up to five times a week, really for health benefits. Moderate activity means, you know, being slightly breathless but still being able to carry out a conversation. So it's one thing starting an exercise program, it's another thing then sticking with it. So try and keep yourself as motivated as possible. Um, you know, so look for a bit of variety in your exercise program. Exercise with a friend so that, you know, it becomes fun. Um, set goals, as Trish said earlier on, you know, her goal was to walk to the gate you know, in, in the initial stages after her stroke. So set yourself a goal, you know, based on what your, your physical functioning level is. Make it a habit, make it part of your daily routine, and that's very, very important. And then track your progress. So you can actually compare, you know, a month down the road, you can look back and you can say, well, you know, I've come on quite a bit. Um, this is just showing deep breathing exercises and really, you know, to breathe deeply, you shouldn't be moving your shoulders. And often we see that with people, you say, take a deep breath, and they go, and that really is futile. So if you all just want to gently put your hands on your tummies and take a deep breath in. As you take a deep breath in, you should feel the tummy start to lift. 
Unfortunately, some people's tummies will lift more than others, <laughs> so they will. And that really is good breathing. So that's something that you can all <coughs> practice, whether you've had a stroke or not. Um, you can work on that yourselves at home um, to just help you use your lungs more efficiently and more effectively. And who knows, with exercise, anything is possible. <laughs>